about the tunnel and dumping the dirt? Um, well, the city of Miami didn't approach uh, the Virginia Key Beach Park Trust board or myself. Um, it's really something we heard about um, through other, you know, friends of Virginia Key, the newspaper, and others. Uh, they didn't approach us directly, you know, or collaborate with us in any way on, on the dumping. So is that kind of deceiving for you? Do you feel like they should have told you and they didn't? Um, I don't know if I'd say deceiving. Um, historically, the city has moved forward and treated the island of Virginia Key as a dumping ground. Um, it's disappointing. Um, we've had a relationship now for several years restoring the park. And, you know, these are the kinds of things in the relationship that's been built that we, you know, we'd like to be at the, the first stages on. Um, so it was disappointing not to be notified. So what do you see coming in the next few weeks? Like, are, have they already started? They're actually at the landfill before they actually put their plan into action. Um, I don't know all the details of their plan, but as it's been explained to me, they have two or three other landfill sites in Dade County that will take the, the material, will take the spoil. So I know right now some is being taken out to a landfill out in the Doral area or kind of far west Dade. Um, and out there is where there's going to be some testing of how clean the material is and then whether or not it's completely transformed. And so then I come back to the proposal of putting it in action. Now why do you think that the city has been treating Virginia Key as a dumping site for all these years? Well, again, I, I wouldn't say the, the state, but the city of Miami, um, it, you know, I, I think for several reasons. I mean, one, uh, a sewage treatment plant was put out on this property a few decades ago. Um, and along with that, there's been a contaminated site for decades that the county and city um, have known of and, and haven't taken different steps to do anything about. Um, and I think that just goes along with their mentality. Um, when you go historically and, and deeper, and when you get into you know, cultural history of South Florida, um, this being the location of the colored only beach, I'm sure decades ago, some of those things played into the thought processes of dumping here or even building a sewer treat treatment plant you know, a mile away from a public beach. Now, you've been saying that you've been building up the island and, and making it a better place. Now, do you think this is just going to set you guys back when they dump this here? We hope not. We hope that, you know, the tests that are done that show that the material is clean um, is for real. And, and that's where we have our concerns, myself, others who care about the island, the, the board. Um, and I know a lot of people at the city of Miami, you know, I think all over this country and, and all over the world, you hear about projects of this nature, guarantees that material or spills or whatnot will be safe or, or won't be dangerous. Um, and I think there's a, a huge history of where those things weren't true. You know, years later, you, know, you, you see that it wasn't exactly um, as it may have been represented. We're looking that that doesn't happen. Um, the way the design is set up for the material to be laid out on the landfill, um, that was encouraging. Um, it wasn't one giant pile of fill that would have had some, some different dynamics in terms of you know, leaching of what is already known as chemically disturbed areas. This is an island where tidal flow goes in and out. And so we know from the existing fill that there's leaching of chemicals into the water. Those things are monitored. Um, it's not something that's above standards of harm, but it's something that happens and is known to happen. Adding additional tonnage on top of that, like a sponge, there's, you know, there's some thoughts that it may add to greater leaching. The design that they showed did lay it out um, kind of not even in piles but in plateaus 
six feet high over large acreage of areas. And so it doesn't have that centralized downward force that historically when dumping was done here, there were just giant mounds of, of spoil. Now they're talking about a recreation site to be put on top of the landfill once it's capped. Um, do you think that's gonna have any impacts later on? Like if they put soccer fields there, do you think the kids are gonna wind up with different Again, <laughs> again, I would hope that, you know, something like that, that you know, that's where we look that, that this material is clean. I don't plan to play there, okay? <laughs> that doesn't seem like a good idea to me. Um, when I hear ball fields or in what was a, you know, a brown field, that just doesn't make that much sense to me. Um, again, Standards are met, state gets satisfied, permits are allowed, um, DERM may agree, um, testing may be done, and it's shown that, you know, there won't be any problems, but uh, that doesn't seem like a good idea to me. So it's safe to say you won't be bringing your kids to play soccer then? I don't have any kids, but I would ask my nephews, nieces, friends of theirs and whatnot, yeah, probably not. Um, Come play at this park as opposed to play right on top of what was a brown field. That just, like I said, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, 